Hey guys, I'm Davey Wavy, creator of the gay erotic website, himrose.tv, and today I am joined by sex and intimacy coach, Finn Dearhart, and my friend and luxury lifestyle curator, Dwayne Wells. And today we're going to be talking about gay sex, and in particular, having a tantric sex date. Girl, very on brand for you. Very off brand, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. It's 2020. <laughs> Himrose Live is brought to you by Himrose.tv. Himrose.tv is kind of like a porn site, but with a soul. The videos are hot and cock throbbing, but designed to increase pleasure, build deeper connections, and send you on a journey of sexual exploration and discovery alongside a community of like-minded people. For listeners of Himrose Live, join Himrose.tv for 20% off at Himrose.tv forward slash pod. That's H-I-M-E-R-O-S dot TV forward slash pod. Himrose.tv, it's like porn, but better. Well, welcome, Dwayne. Good to see you. Well, thank you. Good to yeah. see you, Finn. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks. Nice to see you too, David. L longtime viewers of my YouTube channel will remember Dwayne from many of the road trip videos that we did together. Um, or remember being tortured by them. <laughs> <laughs> We've... We've gone from Tel Aviv to Manchester Pride to the Spanish coast, the south of France, Texas. TPs. We did it all. Yes. Yeah. Argentina. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's. We've got some miles on yeah. us. In yeah. more ways than one. That's when true. was the last time you guys traveled together? I think it was Argentina. Probably. And we yeah. didn't film that. I think our last road trip, oh, was Curacao. We did Curacao. A, we yeah, did a road right. trip in Curacao. No, actually, it was Miami. 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 Okay. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. Oh, As wow. I got more into porn, I think I became a little <laughs> bit less marketable for tourism boards. I think the key word is pariah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, unfortunately, our road trip <laughs> days have kind of come to an end, but our friendship continues. Continues. Yeah. They yeah. quit asking. Basically, they quit asking you to to sponsor like road. Like, yeah, road they're like, we don't want you to come to our country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking of being on and off brand. Yeah, right. they're like, you're you're toxic, actually. <laughs> so. I mean, he was already pushing the envelope before. And to tell you the truth, that that, that is now. true. Yeah. Yeah, but now you're like, no, but I'm finding myself now, and now you don't want to like validate me for who I yeah. am. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm like really self actualizing. Yeah. Finn, can you move the microphone just a little bit closer to you? Like, are you talking like this or like this? Yeah. I don't know. Just like a little. Yeah. I can move my body. My microphone is on a fixed amount oh. of space. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Is this good? Is this yeah, good? yeah. I don't know. You sounded a little far away. <laughs> you just miss me. I do miss you. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, I was just going to say after traveling the world together, now we're stuck together in a two bedroom house here in Palm Springs, but stuck. Things have changed. Well, I was going to say you said the word stuck. I thought it was interesting. Well, interesting. I think it, we are actually stuck because I was just reading on the news that I, I think California is on the brink of like a three week lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that you say that with a yeah. laugh. Like a little giggle. Like, yeah. 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 Because, like, what because else are you going to do? What else are you going to do, right? Yeah. Cry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you guys like cuddle and like. Cuddle? Oh, oh my God, God, no. You've traveled the world and you won't cuddle. We sit as far <laughs> apart from each other as we possibly can. This is the closest we've ever been. Yeah, Aww. probably. Yeah. Except on a plane. Yeah. Uh, Y'all be sitting yeah. there, like, sitting at the table and it's like, we see Davy's eyes. <laughs> we see your <laughs> eyes. And the next thing we closer. see, right? yeah, yeah, no, you're like in the floor in the Probably the most uncomfortable exchange Finn and I had was a couple years ago oh. when we first started working together. Finn was staying over at my house. I think it was like after a shoot, and Finn yeah. was like, "Can we cuddle?" And I was like, <laughs> uh, "Uh, okay." And I, <laughs> I, like, I was like, "Oh." I could have just gone and like cuddled with your refrigerator. <laughs> would have been just as satisfying. That would have been just as nourishing. <laughs> I'm like, Girl, you can lean on my shoulder. <laughs> can you imagine oh, if I ever said to you, can we cuddle? No. <laughs> can you even imagine? No. No. I mean, not that it would occur to me. I just felt so much love and excitement and just like we'd finished this shoot. I was like, oh my God, this was so fun. It wasn't like a, you know, maneuver of any kind. 
Right. Oh yeah. No, I'm yeah. And now that I know you more, I, I yeah. like understand that. But at the time I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Found I, mean, your I host cuddle parties. <laughs> I, used, yeah. I used to used to host cuddle parties. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh 2020. Yeah. So Finn, how are things in Nevada City? Ooh, they're cool. I mean like cold actually, I should say. The, I got to see all the, the last like of the fall coming back here amazing trees and just like looking out my window while i'm working i'll see like a just like waves of red leaves falling through the sunlight it's really it's been really beautiful um the, pi the picture you posted was that a deer or an elk yeah it was a deer like it was a, a deer. huge deer well i mean i don't know it could have been it looked a little elky huh it, it did it had those those big yeah um what are those called not horns antlers, antlers. antlers. yeah yeah, it was right outside. Um, I, I couldn't go out and investigate it, but it walked right by my office window. He's like up in the, do you know where Nevada City is? Vaguely. Yeah. I don't really foothills. either. It's the foothills of the Sierras, the Eastern Sierra Mountains. Oh, the close foothills. To oh, the foothills. <laughs> yeah. That sounds so That's lovely. So yeah. <laughs> so do you enjoy pretty. a brisk canter in the foothills, Dwayne? I don't enjoy brisk canters in most places, actually, <laughs> unless it's a major city like <laughs> downtown, you know, like Kensington in London yeah. or Knightsbridge. Ooh, a brisk yeah, canter yeah, through yeah, Knightsbridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. That, I like that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my thing. Yeah. Dwayne was drunk the other the other night, and oh, nice. Give <laughs> yeah, that story. Yeah, <laughs> just go ahead. Just <laughs> put it all out. There. And when that's he's good. drunk, he has a British accent. <laughs> okay. okay, it's really it's really yeah. entertaining. It is awesome. kind of. Yeah, I mean, I have a slight British accent in normal life, but it's very pronounced after a few cocktails. How how much time have you spent in the UK? I've probably spent more time in the UK than any other country uh, that I visited, other than the United States. Other than the United States, yeah, and Amsterdam. Not long enough to actually have an accent. It's a little bit of well, a I did live there. Kind of like Madonna's accent. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it's totally that. Yeah. It is a bit informative. <laughs> yes. Actually. Okay. But I did live there for six months. No, oh, oh cool. the one that's clearly that was enough. And that was how long well, how many decades ago? And I have a lot of British friends. Oh, there you go. Okay. It's so about to come out now. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. it out. Get it out. Yeah, and I watch a lot of British television and I only listen to books read by British readers i made the mistake today of asking a question about royalty yeah i don't even remember what i asked and as happen. soon as as soon as the question came out of my mouth i was like oh fuck can can i just like take it back and he's like well it's so interesting blah 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 the, i'm like is it interesting and for who <laughs> you should have seen his eyes glaze over oh, yeah. i've seen the eyes glaze over yeah. yeah i was like can you give me like the five minute version of this answer that's awesome yeah. <laughs> Never ask an Anglophile a basic question. <laughs> Don't be a basic bitch with an Anglophile. Because <laughs> you're going to get a dissertation. Every this day. is actually yeah. just going to be an episode about the crown. I was saying, y'all are already, like, y'all are on a road trip just in your house. <laughs> <laughs> it actually has been a bit. Y'all need like to make like that. a series of like videos in each room of the house as if you're on a road trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like, like tomorrow afternoon, we're going to do an edible. That could be like a component of it. Yeah, you're just putting it all out there today, aren't you? Oh, does the world not yet know you do edibles? It's, we're in California. It's legal. Totally. Well, it's we're going to get fucked up. Well, people don't know that I do edibles. Well, now they do. You can do whatever you want. Okay, you're not going to anyway, do But anyway, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm creative. It's 2020. I'm, I'm reinventing myself. Yeah. yeah. Cannabis <laughs> is medicine. Ex yeah. Well, exactly. And after a week of work, and I, I do need have that glaucoma. medicine. You have glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I just say one thing? This I know we're we're gonna get to we're gonna get to the video, but this is the funny. Can I share the story about the snake? <laughs> yes. Okay. So although it's not that funny. Oh. Oh, it is. It is. I haven't funny. Finn. I haven't laughed this hard in okay. years. Um. I I was at one of the antique shops in Palm Springs, and I bought like a little rubber snake. Mm -hmm. And and because Dwayne hates snakes, and so my intention was to scare him with it, but I had to like build up this. I mean, it was really genius. It was so, actually oof. really good. So good. I put the snake in his uh, evening slippers that he keeps by his bed. Because I have evening slippers that I keep by my bed. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were sitting out by the pool, oh, and man. this is when Chad, my ex boyfriend, was visiting, and the sprinklers turned on outside my house, and they mm -hmm. kind of make like a little noise and i said oh god that just sounds like snakes and Dwayne was like snakes 
snakes, snakes, there's no, there's no snakes in Palm Springs, or the snakes. <laughs> but simultaneously, I also said, that sound sounds nothing like snakes. Well, so, but he was planting the I idea. Was plant this is right? how much of yeah. a, a fucking psychopath, I, a sociopath I am. Mm. So, so I was like, yeah, I was like, well, you know, there's not really snakes here. I was like, well, there's this one time, and I was like, ah, I probably shouldn't get into it. And Dwayne was like, well, what? God, what's, what you tell me what happened. <laughs> now you have to tell me. And I was like, well, I left the flue open in the fireplace and the snake came in like through the chimney. This isn't true. This never right. happened. Right. And he's like, well, well, what did it look like? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm describing the fucking the snake that yeah, I just yeah, bought. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. It was like yellow and red. It had stripes. And you're like, stripes? That's I was poisonous. Panicked. I was like, oh my God, that sounds like a coral snake. I'm like, yeah. which way were the stripes? Were they like right. horizontal or were or they yellow? vertical? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm from Florida, right? Like I know snakes, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that's where you got the British accent, Florida. Yeah. Anyway, so 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 I'm, I'm describing the fucking snake that I bought. So you know, we, we finish up, we come inside and Dwayne walks into his room. This is probably like an hour later, 30 minutes later, he goes into his room. And keep in mind, I've had an edible. Oh, did you? At this, at this point? point, yeah, we've had, the, we've had the edible at that point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. And, and so Dwayne walks into his room and goes to put his feet in his slippers and he doesn't have his glasses on, but you can see enough. No, 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 no. Oh. You, you're forgetting. I actually walked into the room, walked right past the slippers to, to the closet and then walked back and then I looked down at oh the slippers God. and I started screaming, <laughs> snake, 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 <laughs> there's a snake. And as soon as he started screaming, I was like, oh, like once you see a fake snake, like Finn, you would be like, oh, it's a fake snake. Like it, it it's not moving, it's rubber, it looks fake. Like yeah. it just startles you for like a second, <laughs> but he's still screaming. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. because I didn't have my glasses on. So I mean, all I saw was something that looked like a snake. So, so you couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. I mean, I couldn't make out the detail. <laughs> they thought it was wow. still alive. So so then I come into the room and I'm and I'm like, or you're out in the living room at this point. I'm like, Dwayne, there's no snake. I'm like, you're just saying that because I was talking about snakes outside. This so it's is just, the sociopath. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is how deep into this is it the I real am. Fine starts for him. Right. Because yeah. I want to establish credibility. You know, so that when I do go in and scream, he's going to believe it. Because if I'm like, oh, my God, there's a snake. Oh, and I start screaming, too. Like, there's much more. There's more drama yeah, if yeah. I deny your reality and then believe it. Yeah. So I'm like, there's no snake. And then I walk in. And, of course, I see the fake snake. And I go, what? There's a snake. There's a snake. Mm -hmm. So I'm screaming. And Dwayne's going, it's moving. It's moving. <laughs> <laughs> rubber snake. It's That's not awesome. moving. It's moving. At all. That's so then awesome. so then Chad comes into the room and Chad picks it up by the tail and he's oh, okay. kind of like like uh -huh. dangling it a little bit and Twain's going, oh, it's trying to bite you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm running complete I'm running to the bathroom uh -huh. to hide from them and the snake. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was it was like five minutes of, of enjoyment. Uh -huh. Yeah. I nearly died. I could have had a heart attack. I don't think we were on edibles. Did you no, have we like were. yeah, like tons of endorphins pumping in your body? Yeah, you were ready to like run a marathon. Oh, I, I, you've probably never seen me move so fast. No, I've never seen so much energy in you. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's a so great that's a story. <laughs> like, oh my god, I like it. It's moving. It's moving. <laughs> it's no, that was you. the best part. Was that when I went back into the room, I could have sworn <laughs> it was moving. <laughs> Because I think I saw, at first it was just a quick glimpse and I ran right. and then I looked at it again and it was sort of like this yeah. swirly snake. Well, I so hope, it looked like it. I hope everyone ran. enjoyed that little detour. I'm sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here so comes the talk, syllabus. Yeah. Here here's the syllabus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so stop laughing. We're going to talk about the video this week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Be serious. Wipe that smile off your fucking face. <laughs> Now we're gonna talk about the newest himroast.tv <laughs> video release titled Tantric Sex State Ooh. featuring, yeah. You, mi you missed a very pertinent snake segue. Oh my God, do it. Well, the Kundalini and the spine and you're like, speaking of serpents running up the spine with like Chris Harder and Wyndham Gold in yeah. this yab yum position, which is depicted in art with snakes going up the spine. Well, anyway, I, 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 yeah. I butchered it, but yeah. <laughs> that was a little too esoteric for me. Yeah. So, but thank you. That was yeah. really good. Dr. Dearheart. Mm.
So this week's video <laughs> release is titled Tantric Sex Date featuring Wyndham Gold and Chris Harder, two very sexy men. Uh, the video falls into the kind of instructional category of some of our content and has a voiceover. I know that that is an acquired taste. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love, I don't mind voiceovers, but the, like the, the A of SMR, is that what it's called? Does it drive you nuts? It drives me crazy. I don't get it. I'm like, just fucking talk to me, Davey. Like, I know your voice. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to be, like, if I'm just like, and now assume the yum yum position, the yab yum position. Like, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make it seem sensual to match the video. Mm. You also hated it. I can tell from your face. I, what, did I say that I hated it? You did with your face just now. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, it's it's a weird thing. Okay. I think. <laughs> <laughs> my my voice is apparently a very weird no, thing. It's not your voice. It's, it's the not method. It's like if I were it, to suddenly start talking with a British accent, for instance, we would be like, "What is he doing?" Well, but for the video, like, don't you think like whispering like this no, is a no. little bit no? <laughs> no, actually, not, no. You... <laughs> I, I I have to agree with Finn. No, okay, I hear you be like so, blah, 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 and just like talk at me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was trying to be sensual. I want you to say, "Get it." Okay. I was trying to be sensual. I mean, maybe and not sexy, those words exactly. But anyway, this video <laughs> voiceover side <laughs> is an invitation. Get your membership now at himrose.tv. <laughs> so you can listen to this magic. It's an invitation to experience a different type of sex with your partner, fuck buddy, or hook up. Or, the, or yourself. The concept is by Jason Tantra. Uh, he wrote. If you think tantric sex, and I'm going to do it in my fucking normal voice, if you think tantric sex is about incense, kale, and candles, think again. In today's video, we learn how to have a real, practical tantric sex date. No candles required. In general terms, tantric sex combines your sexual energy, heart energy, and spiritual energy, and often results in heightened experiences of bliss, sometimes even enlightenment. So <laughs> It's a tall order. <laughs> 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 in 12 minutes you will <laughs> you will reach nirvana for 34.95 a month uh, i think the invitation in this video for me is instead of having like the destination focused sex of like i want to get off i want to come it is um which i think most of us like typically have it's about making the goal connection heightened heightened states of of awareness um, it's, it's a very different type of sex than I think what we're used to. And I'm curious what you guys thought of, aside from the voiceover, the video. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I love the video. And I have to say something about this, like with the coming piece, right? Like, yeah, that's in place because I mean, yeah, it feels good to come, but the reason the guys are so attached to that, myself included, and I'm being working through that is because it like it's some kind of marker of like worthiness or doing a good job or like in the proof of that, it's like if you can't, then what happens? Like everyone's so worried about it. I'm like, oh, I like, couldn't come and then that was a big deal versus like, oh well, I didn't come. Like you know, like so attached emotionally to it. And they still come and or I think at least um, Chris comes and Chris comes in this video. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there still is a come shot and we kind of do that to like appease the audience, but it's like, so it, it's, it's almost like it didn't need that. Like it kind of like was less um, emotionally intense than watching them just make love. Right. I mean, this is yeah. my thoughts, but <clears throat> I, so they're, they're fucking in um, that yab yum position or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember when we were filming this, what was totally available to us was having Chris come in Wyndham mm -hmm. in that position because they were like so into it. And it was like actually hard for him to not come because um, they were like, they were fucking like in the throes of passion when we were filming that. that the noise that they were making was real. Yeah. Um, and in hindsight, I'm, and I remember our thing was like, well, if you come like this, we're not going to see it on camera. And Mm. Because, because people, I, yeah, people are so hung up about it, right? But it's so, isn't it hot to see somebody come inside somebody? Well, I guess you wouldn't see it, right? Like, but you can see. I mean, I used to can. like slow down on purpose to watch like the pulse the nuts. of the dick, and yeah, and like, and yeah. you know what's happening because you're filling in the gaps anyway. It's all imagination. You're watching a video. You know, it would be hot as if that happened, and then 
And then after they pulled out, we saw it like dripping out of the hole or something. That's a crowd pleaser. I mean, there are many ways to manifest that, I think. Oh, tell yeah. us some of them. No, I mean. Speak into the, the, the mic, girl. That one. <laughs> <laughs> that one in particular. Um, mm. No, I thought this video was was great because I think it was about more than the uh, objectification that you know we normally see in porn, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, but it really speaks to the kind of sex that I, I feel that you know has, has always been has dominated my life. Like the actual sex. The actual sex. Right. Yeah. It's it's because I think that you know people have gotten so hung up on you know, being attracted to a body part or, um, you know, just that that getting off sort of mentality, as you said. Um, and this is this was really about the mind, body, soul connection. This was about connected sex, which to me is the most fulfilling variety of sex at the end of the day. I mean, sometimes, you know, you, you might not want to devote the time mm -hmm. that it takes to have that kind of sex. Um, or the energy, or the energy, finding that person, right? Yeah. Like, because and you don't, and that's not always available to us, right. right? You know, it's like you're not gonna find somebody always who you know who you have that connection with and who you can have that kind of sex with. But when you can, to me, that's the apex. I think you of make good sex. I think you make a good point that this is well. Look, so this is the sex that I aspire to have in real life. It's not the type of sex that I'm used to jerking off to in porn. <laughs> Exactly. Because, well, I mean, because most of the time what you see is fantasy and not what you're really having in real life. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think because we're talking about different stuff, you know, like, I guess, like, when we, like, want to get off, for instance, and use porn to do that to accelerate it, it's like looking for an arousal template to just kind of help you get to some point. Right? Like, it's not like, I think I'm going to just lie on the bed for a few hours and explore my body and like you, you could get into that space in yourself too it's just a different pathway like it's it takes a while like you actually said something interesting um about like the time or the energy to get there i think that's kind right. of part of it too because you got to be like really present and expanded and you know not distracted and focused on pleasure and that takes a little bit of time to get there uh, versus like oh i'll just whack off really quick and it's more like a rocket you know right yeah the 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 Porn that I jerk off to is like, it's like the filthiest shit that I can find, you know? Is that still, yeah. do you still, is that still part of your? If, if my goal is to just like come, if I'm just like, ah, I got too much sexual energy. I need to like get this out of me as quickly as and efficiently as possible and still adhere to my 9 PM bedtime. <laughs> then, then yeah, I'm like, I'm looking for like a college gangbang, you know? What was like, the last thing that you watched? Um, what you share? What you share? I will share if I can remember what it was. Oh, um, there's this site called, I think mm -hmm. it's called, fun, I know it's called Fun Size. <laughs> oh, fun, fun, fun Size. It's called like something like. Fun Size Boys. Something kind it's of. about um, size differences. Yes. We were talking about this I'm earlier. I'm familiar with I know it, Fun yes. Size Boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like Dr. Wolf, who's like, yeah. like six foot six, like yeah. fucking some twink. Yeah, yeah. I thought that I think that's kind of fun. He's like yeah. three times the size. <laughs> like it's almost comical. Yeah. I think that was the last thing. I, oh my god! And I jerked off Finn with the tanga that you had sent me oh, for yeah. my Christmas present. Awesome. Finn sent me. I have to reach out to them for a sponsored video because that shit, Finn, that thing was good. You love it. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like a it's like a flesh jack, but um, but way could, more sophisticated, right? <laughs> So sophisticated. <laughs> it's very high end. They're like a hundred bucks, right? Like they're yeah. they're yeah. pricey, yeah. and you can squeeze it, which is also good for me because I'm used to like the grip of death when I jerk uh. off. <laughs> so you can squeeze the sides, which lets the air out, and so it vacuums around your dick. Yeah, it does. It and it also has all these different little textures on the inside that do it's very all kinds. Of, they're very like all kinds of little sensations all over the cock, and you can rotate it a little bit, and then it's a whole new set of sensations. Oh, <laughs> try that. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're listening, don't go out and buy one because I'm going to do a future sponsor video and there'll be some sort of discount code. So yeah, well, I'm awesome. just learning all sorts of things today. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good one. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You're lucky that we have separate bathrooms here because you would 
see it all displayed out. <laughs> I have to say to this point about like the tantric sex date, when I, I told, I think, well, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but when I was in San Francisco last month, I was there for a month by myself and I took my tango with me and I did do this on multiple nights. I would just like ahead of time, it's a different mindset, but I would be like, oh, I'm going to like have a date with myself tonight. And I played with my tango and there were like a couple nights that I did it for like two or three hours. No point. Wow. Just, but I did smoke a little cannabis but I would just like build energy and it felt so amazing. I would be like, oh, it, like making all this noise and just moving. It did take a while to get into that, but it's kind of like a trance, you know, it keeps you keep working higher and higher. So I put those parameters on myself. Like, I'm not going to use porn to do this. I just want to see like what me and my Motanga thing can do. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. I mean, it's a similar pathway, I think. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good idea. The, in this video, the like kind of the first part of it is dedicated to the guys just it's basically doing what you're saying, like building up erotic energy. Mm -hmm. um, so they're arousing each other. It's kind of building, it's building. And then they move into the yab yum position, which I think there was definitely a missed opportunity to call this yab yummy. Well, it's actually to yeah. two guys, it's yum yum. Because yab ah. would be like the feminine counterpart. We could have called it like yummy yum. Yeah. Oh, it's like a Justin Bieber song. Girl, you got that yum, yum that yeah. yum, oh, you that yum, that yum. That. Like, <laughs> <I love that. laughs> yeah, we should have licensed that. I'm sure. I'm sure we could have got the the royalties. Um, so, for listeners, I guess to describe the position, Finn, you could probably do this better than me. Well, yeah, one person. Have you done it? Have you done I've it? never done it. Have you, you done this? this? Yeah, you've done it. Yeah. How? I like, it for a what do you mean how? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I mean, like, what does that even mean? How is, is he asking you anatomically or like? No, no, like I, do you think I'm physically incapable? Of I doing think you're it? capable of doing. It. I think you just want to know that it existed. Huh? I've done things that you don't even know. Ooh, about. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, but here's the thing. I, I mean, I, I believe in having this sort of connected sex, mm -hmm. and that, and I mean, I've had sex for hours. Mm -hmm. I mean for days you don't know this about me you don't know my life i know you're I filthy shit. Wow. you know what i mean i mean i don't believe in quick sex i've always said this to davy like i don't i mean i don't have time if like if someone's like i, I want to hit it and quit it then you need to find somebody else because <laughs> i'm not that girl <laughs> <laughs> and because, there's a sea of them right there. there's a ton of them. yeah i mean there's plenty of people but when you come to my house you're gonna have to take off your shoes and take some time because we're gonna be there for a while mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah. So awesome. in that world, I mean, like, I don't think I intentionally went like, oh, I want to go into the yummy, yummy position. <laughs> I think it just kind of happened. Intuitively. I didn't even know it was the yummy, yummy position. You're just yeah. I know it felt yummy, sexually yummy. intuitive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're basically uh, yeah, there we go. tantrica right here. <laughs> tantrica. So, tantrica. So, Finn, what, can you describe the position? Yeah. you. Um, one person's going to sit um, cross-legged just spine upright and the other person is going to face you and put his legs around your back so that your chest and your, well, your dicks and your stomach and your hearts are touching. And it's like, it's like a lotus flower is, you know, the base of it is what that symbol means. And then the two lovers facing each other that closely, it's their, I guess in the tantric piece, right? Like all their chakras are touching each other. And so the energy is supposed to spiral up through, that's all esoteric, that piece. But I would just say like, it's very, very intimate because you're like right in someone's face and you can take turns being like one person like on the bottom and the holder and one person in the lap and see what comes up for you there, swap places and do the other role because it brings out different parts of your sexuality. And the dick is inserted. Can be. I mean, you, I was gonna say you can do that cuddling. I do that all, the, like me and my partner do that just when I kind of need to like, be held or hmm. you know but yeah having sex um the first level i think is really cool it gets kind of overlooked is like just having the dick inserted and the guy who's sitting in the lap and not thrusting and moving but just like not moving just focusing on being contained and containing um and trying to generate sensation out of just like focusing on what it feels like to be with each other that way and then start moving but you can get a lot of sensation out of just focusing on the presence of it there um, I, lo I love that the sex for me it felt very circular that um 
like it, or like a like a circuit that was being connected. Totally. Chris Chris's cock was inside Wyndham, and then the two of them are like breathing in each other's breath. Like it was almost like a a, a wheel that was spinning. I know you're saying oh. spiraling up the chakras, but for me, it felt like mm -hmm. like there was this. Um, I don't know. Like it was very round, and. Um, probably not a great way to have sex during COVID when you're like breathing into each other's faces. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love you probably. I'm like, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but something to try maybe once we all get vaccinated. Oh my um, God, vaccination goals. <laughs> yeah, something to look forward to. Or if you're, in, the, if you're in, a, in your bubble. Or if you're in your bubble. If you're in your bubble. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Finn, you can do this with your partner. I do. Um, I love this. It. This is this is a video we also filmed. Um, I think we filmed like two years ago. It's yeah. always really evident to me when because we just film things a little bit differently now. Um, but we filmed this in Joshua Tree, and I know this isn't the point, but you could totally see both like outside the window and then even in the reflection of the picture above the bed, like the beautiful landscape that's outside the window, the mountains, and like I know it's not about that, but I do appreciate those little. The little extra touches, I think it's nice. Well, it's yeah, like, but I guess well, I want to know why it's not about that because to me it feels so um, like relevant. You know, like it's spacious. It's it's kind of wild and connected to that. Yeah, to me. I mean, the sex is front and center. The, those yeah. things are kind of like the dressing. Yeah, and it, it's sort of. I mean, there's something sort of pure about it too, like organic about it happening in that setting. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that's the yeah. setting when it seems like you might be more inspired. To like, do that rather than the city or something like you. It conveys that it's like a special, like I, when I watch something like that, I, I construct a story and I'm like, oh, they're like on a weekend getaway in Joshua Tree, like having yeah. this little, like, I don't know. It, um, yeah. it feels special. Yeah. Um, and space, right? Like this like spaciousness, which psychologically is so necessary to even have one of those kinds of experiences because yeah. you have to be open, relaxed, present, feel safe emotionally, you know. I do want to read a few of the comments. Uh, Xavier949 says, I'm just going to read part of the, the comment. Uh, Davey, thank you for the teachings of tantric sex. I especially like when you do a narrative explaining the scene in your relaxing voice. Oh, there you go. There you all go. Of you. Yeah. All of you. <laughs> You made a statement in your written comment that hit home with me. The magical word was circuit. I know videos have a time restraint, but for me, I like to start out balls deep inside my partner. This is your video <laughs> showed. But I like to be inside my partner for several minutes without a lot of movement. We kiss, look into each other's eyes, talk and caress our bodies while I play with his cock. This keeps me hard without movement. This is where the circuit comes in for me. I then like to plug on a... I then, oh, I liken it to the plug on a lamp being inserted into the wall socket. Once connected, the circuit becomes one and the electricity flows lighting the lamp. For me, all the physical and emotional feelings of being connected to my partner flows from his body through my cock and into my body. And I hope he is experiencing the same in reverse. It is a euphoric feeling to me and I like it to last a while, just like you, Dwayne. Yeah, it's very interesting. Motion 1234 says, first incredible film done so professionally and has made me feel like I was right there in bed with them. Second, each time I watch these tantric sex experiences, I am learning more and more that it has everything to do with synchronization. Synchronization of the breath, synchronization of the eyes, synchronization of the thrust and so on. Mm -hmm. I am truly seeing that this is how to maximize the experience in every way. For me, the key is remembering this while in the actual experience. Totally. As always, thank you for your beautiful work. It is it is difficult when you're like to to remember all of it when you're in the moment. It's a practice, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. practice makes perfect. perfect. Yeah, and don't you feel like it's uh, you know, Finn? It's a certain degree, isn't it? Sort of organic to you know your own development and evolution sexually. Like if you enjoy that naturally, wouldn't it be? Um, it would feel more normal to you. Yeah, you mean, are you saying that, like, if it were, like, someone's natural um, way of expressing themselves, they would right. feel, like, so far out there? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that, for sure. But I think people, one thing that needs to be highlighted in my mind is that we come to sex for different reasons. 
So right. that's why I, I take to task sometimes like these like, oh, enlightenment is available there. Or, you know, it's like, well, what does that really mean? You know, for people, it's like it's a spiritual dialogue. I mean, people are coming to sex to get like a sense of like worthiness maybe or to like feel agency and power or like, I don't know, like all kinds of reasons. Um, so that's going to what we go into the sex experience for is going to determine like what we do and how we actually do it. And they... I was going to say the intent is so big. Like if we want to create a space right. where walls come down and we keep taking off layers of our psychological defenses, I mean, that is kind of far out there for a lot of people, right? Because sex can be a way of even defending ourselves anyway. So I, it, it's a kind of a radical shift, I think, in just people's how they think about it, especially in the gay community. Right. It's That is interesting that it's, like sex can be, it can be a way to like quench boredom. Totally. It can yeah. be a way to connect with your partner. It can be a way to express power over someone. It can be a way mm -hmm. to hurt someone. Yeah. It, it, it can just be pure validation. It can be validation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, but seeing it as like a tool for yeah. heightened awareness, like that's kind of fun for totally. me. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, this isn't how I usually interact. This isn't usually what I get from sex um so yeah and i think a guy might come to that experience and so you know maybe there's a guy who's like really not comfortable in himself with taking down those layers and wants sex to be a theater in which he kind of augments his you know performative masculinity or something well then he's not going to really necessarily be attracted to putting all that down and making all these noises and just letting his body be like fluid and you know non quote-unquote traditionally masculine it's it's a lot to take off for one experience. It's kind of a process, I think, for people to get there. Any other thoughts about today's video? <laughs> <laughs> that, what? We have other things to talk about. I don't, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a great, that's a great yeah. way to, that's a great note to end it on. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah let's go there. I'll right. work on the transitions, guys. It's only, <laughs> we've only been doing this for two years. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll leave you to it then. <laughs> He has so, a mute, he has like a mute button that when like it when he's crying, he just, <laughs> I just cut, we are cut done <laughs> with this topic. We're moving on. Yeah. Go on. All right. First things first. I have some housekeeping. Uh, I just posted a new YouTube video today featuring Ty Roderick and Nico Nova, who you guys um, will remember from the Golden Hour video, where Ty took pictures of Nico. Um, in the YouTube video, we get to see those actual photographs that Ty took. He's actually a, photo a photographer. Mm. Um, and they like break down each picture. It's like one of those Vogue videos, you know, that they have where it's like breaking down um, the look. So that's on my main YouTube channel. And then on Facebook, um, if you guys follow me there, you've probably seen that um, I posted my latest sex story last night. Um, this was about I can't remember for the life of me if I've shared this on the podcast. Sure, it's but me. It, yeah, it's about the construction. Did you see this on Facebook? I saw it and I didn't watch it all because I was like, oh, I know that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't know the story. I don't know the story. It's it's about a construction worker that I hooked up with. Um, I, I think, I'm, maybe I didn't talk about it on the podcast. The very short version of it is that mm. um, I was having work done on my house. I wanted some quotes. I had a construction worker come over and a lot of the people I've worked on my house have been beautiful in their own way, but not necessarily something that's like really caught my eye. And this guy fucking caught my eye. He was hot and like fit and his like polo shirt was tucked <laughs> into his khaki. Like, he just looked good and very like clean cut. Um, and so I showed him the project. I took him inside my house because I had paint in the garage. And when he walked by, he walked by this wall, which I don't know if you guys can see it behind me, but there's all these nude erotic photos. Um, and when we came out of the garage, he was like, which one of these guys is you? And I was like, oh, these are like pictures from like the 1950s. Well, but I'm like, oh my God, is he like <laughs> trying to like open a door here? Yeah. So I got him a glass of water and, um, and he was like, so, you know, like we started talking and I asked him where he lived and, he like lives with his wife and kids anyway. And I was like, uh, and he was like, what do you do for work? And so I told him and he didn't under, when I was like, Oh, it's a erotic website that connects game at blah, blah, blah. He was like, what, what do you do? And I was like, Oh, I make gay porn. Mm -hmm. 
he understood that. And he's like, well, can I see some? So I played him one of the videos. I actually which played one? him Discovering Your Erogenous Zones, which is oh, it's okay. the one with Max Adonis and mm -hmm. Alex Mecum. It's it's one that feels very accessible. Like, oh, this is porn. Right. And um, he was like, oh, so that guy's the bottom. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, that's what you are? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, sometimes. Wait, like that's This sounds like a porn. A girl, so much I so, mean, I wouldn't film this because it's so cliche. I was gonna but, say, like, were you? I, I think I might have been like, oh my god, how annoying! Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to have sex with him. I wasn't yeah, annoyed. I was like, like, is this really like? Never mind. You go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so he showed me. He was like, I'm a sexual freak, and he showed me a video of him fucking his wife, who was like really hot. And, and I was like, oh my God, like clearly the door is open at this point. So I said to him, well, if, if you ever want to do anything, here's my phone number. And I gave him, I was writing it down on a post-it note and cause he was coming through like a larger company. I don't know that he had my number. And as I turned around, he had his dick out. So I blew him and he came in like a minute. Which was fine because once I was on my knees, I was like, "Well, the fun, the tension has been broken." It was like the build up, like that was that was really fun. Once I was actually sucking his dick, I was kind of like, eh, "Yeah, like what?" what? No, let's hear yeah. more. This is when it actually gets very interesting to me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, so, like, when you're down there, then what? <clears throat> what were you feeling? Well, I was feeling. I was like, "All right, well, I got my validation. Like, I like the the I broke the like the the fun parts over. Um, now I have this task ahead of me of sucking this man's dick." Um, Do you hear this? A... <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're just brushing over this. I'm like, well. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. So I, anyway, I sucked it. And he came really fast, and I was pleased by that. Because I was on my knees, like on the floor. So, <laughs> and, do we have any questions about that part? Well, I mean, how did you, how did you feel post- <laughs> this process like did how did you feel about what had just occurred like well i'll let you finish and then i want to know what you felt personally i swallowed his cum okay i mean i, I i'm not the physical the emotional <laughs> aspects of what you felt i felt nothing i was just like oh that was fun so you did so you actually thought you thought it was fun yeah yeah okay yeah what am I supposed to feel? No, I'm just name, kidding. I mean, you're supposed to feel whatever you feel. I just, yeah, I'm just curious. You're supposed to. I, like yeah. to name the, I want you to name the ambivalence, though, and like really like, like slow that piece down and look at it. <laughs> what do you mean? You're like, I have the task to just do this now. Now that I got the thing that I was looking for. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the ambivalence between that moment when you turned around and you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to suck his dick now. Then like. You, okay, but so I'll liken it to this. <laughs> What was... People often message me. They're like, "Well, when are you going to do porn? When are you going to do porn?" And and mm. I think if I ever did it, once I do it, like that tension's been broke. Like it's it's totally. the game's over, right? So the whole fun is the buildup of it. Of like, is this really going to happen? So you're saying the satisfaction wasn't the thing; it was the process right. that got to the yeah. thing. right. right so right, you weren't right. actually yes. satisfied by the thing. I didn't care about the thing. It was right. just like. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. A, a dick's a dick. It, it's the whole story that's going on. It's like, oh my God, is this really going to happen? Like, am I going to see his dick? Like, is he really going to take it? Are we really going to hook up? Like, is this and, tension? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. No, that, I'm done, done. Well, and also, so I think, isn't it kind of like outside the, it's like outside the ran, or like parameters around how you usually hook up, right? Like, it's usually prescribed in a way through like right. an app. And yeah. this way, you're kind of dancing with the ambiguity and not knowing and trusting. Does he want this? Yeah. 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 Reading cues and like, I, I just remember my heart beating so quickly. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God. Like, I was like nervous trying to find the damn file on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this has nothing to do with why I'm sharing this story, by the way. So, so I posted the long version of the story on Facebook. Um, I posted it last night. This was a short version. Yeah, this is a short <laughs> version. Well, minus the interruptions, it would have gone a lot faster. And the last time I checked this morning, it had 300,000 views overnight. And people people love, but also hate, listening to my, <laughs> my sex stories. 
And so the comments, the comments were very interesting. And I was like, oh, we better, we should take a few minutes to discuss this. Um, Did you tell the story in your relaxing voice? I didn't tell, I told it in my normal voice, okay, which is curious. even more infuriating okay. for, for most <laughs> people. Right. So, so that was like the number one comment was um, about how, how annoying my voice is, especially <laughs> relative to my body. Cause really? I was shirtless. I That's was shirtless in the, I was shirtless in the video. And so you could like see my muscles. But and I'm like, oh, let's fucking irritating. Cause let's start there. Cause like my voice does match my body because it is well, because my body. It's your body. <laughs> and my voice. And it's your voice. <laughs> like what they're actually saying is that they wish my voice matched their perceptions of how exactly. they expect muscular men to sound. Right. Which, which is, is it, or yeah. whatever their expectation is of you. Like they looking visual, at me. Yeah, looking at you. And it's an yeah. expectation that's shaped by like their own struggle with right. femininity and totally. likely like yeah. internalized homophobia. Like, like it, it, it's just, it's interesting to me that people don't see that. Like, yeah. who Are you cares? surprised? Um, I think I'm surprised because the circles that we usually travel in, like with this podcast, people who listen like are generally people who are on a little bit of a journey and mm -hmm. like are more self-aware than that. Mm -hmm. um, because like making a comment like that reveals so much about the person. And I'm like, yeah. you realize what you just like, what you just said about yourself. Anyway, so that was one part of it, the voice. Okay. A lot of people were also upset that I'm a slut and that I like hooked up with this guy and was like so casual about it. Also that he was married. And like, that was not a big deal to me. Um, my thought is I, I am a slut, <laughs> like, and I actually think that the world could use more consensual sex. I think that um, like, we would all benefit from a little bit more, not all of us, but the world could <laughs> use a little bit more love making or fucking pleasure. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the world could also benefit from a little less judgment. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. in in reality, I mean, it's you, you're sharing a story. I, I don't I, I don't know if it's I, I don't know how you look at that story and 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 have and, and you know, you know, come back with just judgment. I mean, because you're you're like strong judgments. I mean, strong judgments because yeah, yeah. it's a part. It's someone's sexual experience. It's not like you're the only one to have ever had this experience. You didn't break any boundary. You didn't. I mean, you haven't torn down a wall of some sort oh my right, God. with this story. Yes. I mean, like you haven't ended this some grand taboo. Right. You know, you just told a story that's probably you know. Happened Can't a million times. A million times. Can I read this quote? Yes. Y yeah. <laughs> in the individual, as in the state, the totalitarian attitude denies the basic freedoms to a part of the whole. One part arrogates all power and advantages to itself while virtually enslaving or penalizing all other parts if they do not agree to support the dominant element. What Finn said was much more intelligent. Oh, I didn't <laughs> say much that. more intelligent way of trying to I didn't say, say that. I like parroted that's <laughs> Esther Harding. <laughs> <clears throat> she's one of Carl Jung's um, students. Yeah, but like this, what you to what you were saying, Dwayne, about like um, judgment, and it's not like people aren't doing that on their own. They're, they're reacting against you know these parts of themselves and projecting them onto Davy. Should yeah. I have had sex with a married guy? I mean, that's uh, a fair question. That's complex. Yeah, like yeah. maybe, maybe not. I, I don't. So th there's also this like um, assumption that's happening, like that right. he has this close relationship. Like, who knows? Finn, you uh, had a right. very different <laughs> marriage <laughs> when you were when you were yeah. married. I mean, because like I would now for myself today, if I knew someone was married, I wouldn't want to have sex with them just because I know what I went through personally and the impact that it had in my own life and when I was in the closet and married, I had sex with men that I really needed those experiences to come to where I am today now, you know? So if I hadn't had sex with men while I was in the closet, I would have, who knows, you know, but it's complex. And, and, yeah. and also like the people who are like, Oh my God, he had sex with a married man. This is so disgusting. Well, this is what's wrong with the world. Like, I also wonder if a guy that you were really attracted to, like in that situation pulls his dick out, 
Like, right. are, a lot, are a lot of those shoot, people really going to be like, get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 sorry, you're married. I'm not saying it's right, but I am saying I'm, I'm, I'm honest. On it. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the other comment, the other like third category of the comments was a lot of people were um, commented that I'm destroying the gay community. And I was like, oh, wow. and what's strong? Oh, that yeah, that that's deep. Now, so yeah, please I, explain. Right. So like by being sex positive and connecting gay men mm. with like the intersection of gay sex and joy by taking sex out of the shadows, by talking about it, like right. bring it into the light, then I'm happy to destroy whatever aspects of our community is, is threatened by that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like if, mm. if that destroys something, then good. <laughs> like, right. like that's destroying shame and stigma yeah. and Mm -hmm. like the walls that separate yeah i yeah i think that's not what they're implying what um, are they implying, no. though? what does that mean and do i have the power to destroy like what is like oh, come on well can a discussion destroy you yeah. know something that or, or create something i mean you're merely discussing something that actually exists right i mean you're talking about a world that is that that is prominent and that uh, that 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 already exists. You're not creating anything. You're just talking about what is actually happening. Don't try to minimize my experience. No, I mean I'm a pioneer. I'm the I mean, first gay I, man. I, as I said, you are He's the like Neil Armstrong. You are the you you are the gangster original. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when it comes to sex positive, you know, conversation. But I I think that people what people project, and I think this has gone on. Forever and ever, I'm in, particularly amongst gay men. Do you say amen? I'm in. Yeah. yeah. Forever and ever, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> amongst gay men is, you know, this this sort of notion that um, we shouldn't we shouldn't talk about we 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 should exist, but not talk about our existence. Yeah. Not you you know what I mean? Like I think this mm -hmm. has gone on, you know, time eternal. You know, there are there will always be more elements of our community who feel that normalization, you know, like you know, we should have white picket fences. Exactly. And, and that we should, right. you know, make ourselves seem as normal, blend in, not mm -hmm. discuss our differences as much. Right. And you sort of put that, you sort of turn that on its ear. Right. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. what and that's what I think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think people. that's probably yeah. It's not that they're not doing the same things. Exactly. <laughs> they just don't want you to talk about them or because they're, they're not, afraid yeah. that it scares people and Straight makes you people, seem more like, like the other. We're not going to get it, rights yeah. if right. people realize what freaks we are. Did you know we? You know we fought against well, sodomy law. Now you're having sodomy right on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And then like the idea that we're freaks in the first place, you know, like that's an right. internalized belief that we're like a lot of people are reacting against. And I would say that people do this in both ways. They like the white picket fence is a way that people cope with that kind of like, I've always been an outsider and it hurts so much. I don't want to be an outsider. But then some guys take that on and just they act like the outsider and they don't ever <laughs> kind of have any kind of like right. allegiance to anyone or anything. Right. And they just burn all the bridges. So I, I think it's it's funny though, and I've, I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast. I f feel a little bit like a sociopath when I read comments on Facebook or like sometimes my videos get posted on like Queer Tea or some of the blogs um, because we were talking about this earlier. Like you could hook me up to some sort of barometer when I'm like reading these comments. I mean, really vile, like nasty, nasty comments about me. And like the needle wouldn't move. <laughs> I'm just so like indifferent <laughs> as I read these like, like horrible things about myself, and I'm what complete, are they like what? It's just like it's just like how horrible I am, how nasty I am, how I'm destroying the gay community, like all these things. This guy is horrible. Why does he keep popping up in my feed? Whatever it is, because mm -hmm. there's an easy way to fix that. <laughs> right? Yeah, just unfollow my fucking page. Whatever it is. Yeah. But like, I'm almost completely unaffected <laughs> by seeing those comments, and I'm like. Like, I, I feel like I should be. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I'm so just like disassociated. And 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 some of the some of the comments are constructive actually, and those I do appreciate. And I'm like, oh, that's a good point. That's I didn't think of that. Um, sometimes there's something I can learn. But even the positive comments, I'm just so like, I'm like, uh huh. Like, I, it's just, I think at the end of the day, I just realize that like the comments have nothing to do with me. They're like a reflection of 
whatever these people are going through, whatever their experiences are. And I truly believe that. And so when I see a comment about myself that's horrible, I'm just like, well, God, that person has a, a tough life. Like they're going through a lot of struggles, like that that's what they have to kind of put out into the world um, or that they're triggered by this in some way. And at the end of the day, like if I, I only post content that I'm proud of. Um, and I, and I like that video. I like this. I think it's an interesting story. And so I don't need people to say it's good or bad because I like it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, so that's when I feel like a sociopath. I'm just like. But why is it a sociopath? I mean, if you're just like aware, you said you have an awareness that like it doesn't mean something about you. And if you really believe that, I would imagine there's a little bit of defense that you you have up in that space anyway, just naturally. But it's also like, I know this isn't about me because I, I mean, you do get your feelings hurt in life. It's not like you're just like vacant. I, right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. But not from like random co right. comments like yeah. on the. On, on the internet yeah. people you don't even know it's like yeah i can know you fuck off but i don't even have like the fuck off because I, I like like that implies more of a like reaction than i have i'm just like uh -huh. i just like keep scrolling i'm just like uh -huh. like this it used to affect me like i but i've also been making youtube videos for 14 years and when i first started i remember turning the comments off in the videos because i was like ah, what is this i didn't invite these yeah. people into my life like what's going on and i guess i've just had a lot of a lot of practice but I think the normal reaction is if you post a video of yourself and then people like rip you apart yeah. by the thousands, yeah. most people are like gonna <laughs> be affected by that. The way you well, look, the way you talk, the what you're saying. Well, I think it's, you know, it's, it's the way that we deal with criticism. And it's one of the things that I've always admired about you. Am I gonna give you a compliment right now? I am. Mark your counselors. <laughs> Is he, gonna let, is he going to let it in, though, or is he going to make it about you? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, one of the things I've always admired about you is that is that is that very quality. Is I, that you've always been every in all the years that I've known you, you've always been able to rise above any sort of criticism. Like it always seemed to just wash <laughs> over you, even from me, because you know I didn't like, like you when I met you. <laughs> Like, I was even determined when that criticism not to like you. Is accurate. He's like you're just oblivious. <laughs> you to just it. Think you don't. But okay. <laughs> now, I'm going to use this to segue to just a brief, you know, a brief British sidebar. Oh my you know, god. There, <laughs> there's a wonderful. Because <laughs> when I lived in the UK <laughs> for six months, Finn, I'm not sure what you're trying to say about oh. me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's a wonderful film called Tea with the Dames, and it's got. Dame Judy Dench, uh, Dame Maggie Smith, um, uh, I don't four know dames. I don't There's know four dames. dames. Okay. Oh yeah. And anyway, they they all they all get together. They've known each other. They're all in their eighties. They've all they've known each other for fifty years. They've been on the stage together. But what was interesting is when they talk, and these are all they're all dames for Christ's sake. But you know what they said? To the, the, I you, don't. <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> well, you know, there, there was a question about reviews, and they all said they never, ever read them. These are some of the most revered actresses of all time. They said they don't read them because they just, because when they, they said they read them when they were young, mm -hmm. and they don't read them now. Why don't they read them? Because they said that um, inevitably there's, there, there's something about them that triggers them. You know, well, like, I, I'm a step above the dames because I can read those reviews and be completely yeah. indifferent afterwards. Isn't that bizarre? It's weird. Well, a little bit. Do you want? <laughs> do you want it to be weird? <laughs> it, I, I mean, to say that it used to bother you. You've been doing it for 14 but, years, and now you're at a place where it doesn't. So I'm like, wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, maybe I'm just very evolved. Yeah, you really don't even care that much about other people to begin with. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, you, honestly, this is what Matt. This you, is our former um, podcast co-host. He always used to say, "Unless you feed me, fuck me, or pay my bills, I don't care what you think." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> If you're not in the arena, what does Esther Perel say? Is it Esther or it's Renee? Brene Brown. Renee Brown. Brown. Yeah. Then she if doesn't want to hear the anything about what she's doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, unless you're in the arena, like putting yourself out there in the same way. I don't really care what you have to say from the sidelines from the I mean, gallery. Listen, I, saw I think it, that too. Yeah. yeah. If Oprah sent you a message. Oh, I would care. You would care. If Oprah was like, yeah, I would. I would. Like, Davey, this was too much. Yeah. You would go, okay, like maybe like, you take that to heart. were offended. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I do want to take a quick minute as we're wrapping up the mm. end of the podcast here to plug the Himeros experience. We've actually been selling tickets for this because it's in November of 2021. Um, it is, or October rather, of 2021. Um, we're not going to film it. It's a five-day retreat. You can go to himeros.tv and click the events tab. Um, I think we have like 20 spots available maybe. Um, it's a year away. So... Uh, hopefully by then vaccines will be rolled out. Um, it'll be a world where people can safely travel. There's going to be a lot of pent up sexual energy and it's at Easton mountain in upstate New York. And we'll feature many of our favorite himmerous.tv teachers. And if in the event that November is still not safe, we'll just move the dates, um, again. And if you can't attend, then you can get a, a refund for your ticket. So it's really, there's no, um, you're not locked in. Um, there's there's no risk on that that front anyway, so check it out himros.tv. Um, I was gonna ask some questions, but we're kind of at the top of our yeah game? We, yeah we spent we spent, we spent <laughs> <laughs> we spent too much time talking about my damn um the you're, the, you're... The, the snake <laughs> in your relaxing voice <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, if you guys have questions, though, you can send them in to Davy at DavyWavy.tv, or you can call 612-470-5729. I know we have some voicemail questions to get to at some point. Um, next week, we're discussing Voyeur Numerique, which is really fun, really good video. Finn, you haven't seen that one yet, right? No. Ah, you're going to love it. It's so good. <laughs> Finn, where can people get more of you? Uh, FinnDearHeart.com, F-I-N-N-D-E-E-R-H-A-R-T.com. And Dwayne, where can people get more of you? Oh, thedwaynewells.com. Thedwaynewells.com. Not just dwaynewells.com. The. And that's D-U-A-N-E. D-U-A-N-E. Yes, yes. yes. D, let me look this up. Thedwaynewells.com. D-D-U-A-N-E. <laughs> I love it. Hold on. Yeah. You find it? Oh, well, I can't spell. My fingers are <laughs> W-E-L-L-S.com. Yes. yes. Got it. Got it. Yes. We're on hiatus right now. We're yes. revamping, but we'll be back this strong. is the new, this is part of the new image. Yes. We're Porn critique. Yes. <laughs> and remember Porn you, critique. you could join him TV for 20% off at him TV forward slash pod. That's P O D. Mm. Thanks so this... much for listening. Oh yes. This is there we go. Well, yes. 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 Here we are back at Britain. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs> and as always, more to come. Did I do that well? More to come. You do it. More to come. Yes. Is. Yeah. is. More to come. <laughs> yes.